July was the hottest month in the lower 48 states since they started keeping records in 1895. We've, we've seen record droughts and huge wildfires because of that. And extreme weather is having another troubling effect. As Ben Tracy reports, it's melting the few remaining glaciers in the continental U.S. Ben, good morning. Good morning, guys. You know, two million people visit Montana's Glacier National Park each year, and most folks go there to see one of the park's namesake masses of ice. But the glaciers are melting much faster than scientists predicted just a few years ago and could be entirely gone in just two decades. It is a landscape so stunning, it's called the crown of the continent. It's really something else. Over tens of thousands of years, massive sheets of ice slowly slid and chewed away at the rock, carving out these valleys. But now these frozen forces of nature are in full-scale retreat. We are into something that is very unusual. Dan Fegre is a scientist with United States Geological Survey. He's been studying the glaciers in Glacier National Park for 20 years. The glaciers are continuing to shrink every year, and at some point they will be gone. I can remember exactly where a lot of these glaciers used to be and see how much smaller they are. He has the pictures to prove it. They show how in just a few decades many of the park's glaciers have shrunk dramatically. Since 1966, 11 of them have completely melted away. There were once 150 glaciers here in the park. Now there are just 25, and scientists believe in the next 10 to 20 years, they could all be gone. The glaciers have been shrinking since 1850, yet scientists say climate change, fueled by human pollution, has made the melt quicker and more extreme. The average temperature in the park has risen two degrees. Spring arrives about three weeks earlier, and the snowpack has been declining for 50 years. The snow is melting faster than it is being added to, so the glaciers are just getting smaller. Corey Holloway is a glacier guide. She took us across two turquoise lakes formed by glacier runoff and then led us on a hike five miles up the side of this mountain to the top of Grinnell Glacier, one of the park's most iconic ice sheets. In 1938, it covered nearly an entire valley. Between 1981 and 2009, it started to quickly shrink. Are you seeing more people come here because they know they have a short period of time to actually see this? I think so. We've made a lot of top 10 lists lately. You know, that you have to come here before a certain time, before the glaciers melt and see the glaciers. Well, the glaciers are just shrinking and shrinking. And Laurel Meeks first hiked to Grinnell 23 years ago. She's shocked by how much of it is gone. It's quite interesting to see it change that fast. I just find that, you know, a glacier sounds pretty permanent. <laughs> All of a sudden you're like, no way, it can't, it can't change that quickly, and yet it is. So there could come a day where you'd have to head quite a bit further north to see glaciers, like here in Alaska. 5% of this state is still covered in ice. There are about 2,000 major glaciers. Yet the twilight of Montana's glaciers is not just about the changing scenery. Why should we care that these glaciers are melting so quickly? Well, this is a huge portion of our fresh water on this earth. And when they're gone, we lose that. That's huge. The glaciers and snowmelt feed the streams and lakes, a lifeline for fish and other animals, such as bighorn sheep, that call this home. With hotter summers, some wildflowers are already disappearing. The forests are drier and more disease-ridden, and there are more extreme wildfires. In 2003, 10% of the park burned. And that's due mainly to heat and drought, just all from uh, lightning. I was really dry here that year. From the air, you can still see the ashen scar stretch across entire hillsides and valleys. It's not just the glaciers, it's an entire mountain ecosystem changing. How different does this park look 20 or 30 years from now? It will look different, and it will be functioning differently. It'll still be, you know, a, a terrific landscape to come and enjoy, um, but it will have been changed by climate change.
gorgeous, beautiful pictures, Ben. Amazing place yeah. to visit. I wouldn't think that pollution would be a problem there. That's, a, that's what surprised me about that piece. It surprised me too, and I asked them that. I said, you know, you don't think of this pristine wilderness as a place mm -hmm. where this is really an issue, but they said it's like a Petri dish. Because you don't have any of the other factors to deal with, you can really see how the climate is changing, especially as that temperature starts to creep up. If the glaciers do disappear, what does that do to the tourism? Well, that's a big issue. I mean, this is an area that basically relies on tourism. Uh, 4,000 jobs are dependent on tourism there. It's about a billion dollars a year for the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. This place will be gorgeous, even without glaciers. But clearly a lot of people come there just to see those ice sheets and to walk on them. I mean, it's Speaking amazing. of walking on them, yes. I'm not going to do it on the fact that you went five miles up <laughs> with a tripod and you weren't sweating when you did the stand-up. But can, can <laughs> the man, magic of television. I understand. <laughs> can man do anything to offset this or slow this up at all? That is one of the things everyone's looking into. I mean, obviously, everyone wants to do anything you can to slow this down. The scientists say that these glaciers would have disappeared in about 100 years anyway. But now that we're looking at 10 years to 20 years, mm -hmm. anything that can prolong that obviously would be a good thing. All right, Ben mm -hmm. Tracy, thank you.